All right, guys, what's up? We have a, um, like, I guess like a, a for sale slash review of Ken's prop blowback unit. And then we're, I'm reselling this guy, and I'll be going over, like, you know, what he has and uh, just some tips here and there, blah, blah. You know, the usual stuff, guys. So just go with the flow. Anyways, this is Ken's prop blowback unit. It's actually in here right now. And let me zoom in for you guys. I got this a while ago, but I, I don't think I did a video on it. Cause I've been running one in my one of my guns, and then I, I kind of I just was looking at the blue parts, and I just put it in. And I was like, oh, you know what? Let's just add more parts to it. So I started stacking in more parts in here. Anyways, um, very nice job. Okay, and you're gonna notice you're gonna need a head on here, so you guys can get pretty much any head. You know, PDI, um, AIP mix some. Um, what else? Atlas, Angel Custom. Just get whatever head you like. The only tip I got for you guys, big, very important. It's not, you know, it's not a tip. It's a rule. I want you guys to listen to this and pay attention. Whatever screw you install in the back, don't ever change it. So, like, uh, if you take it apart and you need something, get a baggie and put it on there, like, 3D printed blowback in it screw. And make sure when you guys are installing, that's the same, the same rule applies to the front. Don't Go at it left, right, up, down, or push in really hard. Just let it grip in there. You can put a little pressure in. As soon as it starts gripping, make sure you are doing it straight. And just take, it's going to take some time, but eventually it will go down, and then you'll have a nice, tight, um, you know, fit. And don't ever lose those screws. Uh, don't switch out the screws. All right, that's the most important thing, and definitely take your time. All right, it's not like this is aluminum or steel. That's why you got to be careful with this stuff. I've seen some guys, you know, they'll say uh, my my head is on there, not straight. And I know for a fact, if you if you don't put your head on here straight, you just, you know, no offense, but you, you weren't paying attention. And you, you didn't take the time to actually put it on straight. Because uh, I've done a couple of these now, and mine are all straight. So, take the time. We got a fastball. Take the time and do it right, okay? No, no, uh don't rush it now this is incredibly light uh, 5.8 grams just to give you guys a reference this is a stock TM forty three grams that's like use forty two weight well, whatever you guys see that it's a huge difference all right so that's for guys who are trying to build the lightest and lightest uh, 3d printed blowbacking is your route. Will they last forever? No, I, I'm just gonna be upfront with you guys on that. They don't last forever. Um, they they're durable as hell, no doubt. But like you know, this this stock TN one will last you a lifetime. The only thing you want to replace over time is just a head, honestly. And you, you know, obviously you'll have to do the same with here. But these 3D print blowback units will not last you a lifetime. That's why I decided you know go with that. But that's that's full auto. <laughs> that doesn't count. But <clears throat> we are not at that point where 3D printed is equivalent to, you know, it's metal, uh, metal counterpart. <coughs> well, sorry guys. Anyways, let's shoot this. The Ken's prop blowback unit is in here. That's why it's, you know, kind of a weird video where we're meshing a review in here. And I've already been running in my gun, so it's doing just fine. Um, let's get a chrono. This should be over 300. It's got some upgrades in here. Okay. Uh, these. This is two threes. Matrix crappy two threes. We got a couple shots in here. Okay. And no. Okay. We're on. We're on now. And we're out. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you guys can tell. It's loud. It's, <coughs> it's obnoxious. <laughs> I don't even want to see this on full auto. Because I'm throwing in the full auto blowback unit with the kit. Okay. Let's take it apart. And I want to show you guys that. You know, it is the uh, the um, Ken's prop. And then we'll go over, like, what the gun has. And it's not done yet. Okay. Now, one thing you're going to notice. Uh, you probably, I don't know if anyone noticed, but... I shaved this part off so you can actually fit it in with a magwell. 
I, I get this question all the time when people buy new mag welds. The reason is, guys, 4.3s are actually a lot shorter than the 5.1s. Let me give you guys an example. You see this part right here? This part right here allows the base uh, pad to sit down a little bit lower. But even the 5.1 has some issues sometimes. And you'll have to shave off the base pad here and here. This generally isn't an issue if you buy um, base plates like aftermarket ones, but you know, those are expensive, so I don't, not everyone buys them. I, I love them because they stand out and they're cool and they're also useful for um, IPSC because they're usually heavier, so you want your Macs to draw fast as possible. That's the, like the IPSC side of it. But so if you have a 4.3 mag and you bought a mag, well, just shave it off here. It's just easy to mill. You can do by hand, uh, mill it, and that's how you get it in here. And it will depend on the mangle you have. Some, you know, some have like bigger beefy areas around here. Some have beefy around, you know, areas around here. So just do it accordingly to yours. Um, mine was just beefy around here. I I, I love this mangle with this setup, but the only thing that annoys me, this is a Limcat mangle and that's the Infinity Slide. And for those who know the history, um, you know, Limcat usually goes with STI and then STI and Infinity or uh, enemies, but I'm just gonna I'm gonna let that slide because I just I think it looks really cool And I just got suckered into upgrading it because you know, this was in the 300s and now we doubled it but hey you guys are helping me and um, What else? Oh, let's go to the upper. I'm sorry yeah. All right upper we have the AIP fiber rear sight. I just I'm going what we do and you know real still is usually black out and then fiber front, but you know, obviously they use green mostly because we pick up green better. But you do have the the AIP rear as well, okay. And then we have AIP 120. Then we have the AIP um, rebound uh, short stroke kit. I would definitely say I really wanted. To, I just I'm trying not to throw any more money at it. Um, but anyone, if you if you're interested in buy it and you use it, definitely get a steel recoil guide rod that is a you know, like a mandatory besides the loading nozzle those are oops those are two things i would want to add um it's just getting getting a steel guide rod that's important and you the great thing is you don't have to worry about the safeties on a lower because it's a 4.3 that's like one of the best things about the 4.3s besides you know, they, the, what sucks is they don't have a lot of options and slide options, but the seat, these, you save so much money because you don't have to spend any money on, like, the, the four three ones don't really ever break because they go all the way through. So, uh, just the steel ones, if you buy the good steel ones, are 70 bucks. So, that alone saves, and the lower is, you know, there's really nothing you have to do with the lower. Um, I think I'm going to stipple just a little bit more. I don't like that you can see a line here, so... I think I'm just going to stipple a little more around this area so it's, it's flush. But other than that, the uh, lower is good. Um, we have the Cal uh, uh, Cal Leaf Sprinting here, so a lighter trigger pull. And the, the stock one's in the box. And what else? So you can see right here, guys. I'm pretty sure you guys can tell this is 3D printed from. Uh, maybe I'll zoom in for you guys. And like you, you guys are gonna see, you're gonna see use marks on here. Okay, I'm not the type of builder um, who who slaps on a couple parts and then shoots five shots and then sells it. I'm the type of guy that I've always been this way. I'm a player first. Obviously, I'm not playing now because I'm morbidly obese and an idiot and I got a lot of issues. But uh, I will always be a player mentally. All right, I will build the guns. I will test them. I will make sure they work. So yeah, when you get the, the gun, it's not gonna be like it's pristine, right? It'll be, I'll keep it as best as I can, but I test the guns and I make sure they work. That's like mandatory for me. Uh, what else? Stock loading nozzle. I really want to get an extra loading nozzle. I'm out. I'm out of stock. I'm out of extra loading nozzle. That's why I didn't include one. So that's something, uh, if you're buying, looking at this, definitely buy it. Buy an extra loading nozzle, especially with the full auto kit. This is gonna be insane. I don't want to see how bad this is going to be on <laughs> full auto. This is just going to destroy. And um, definitely guide rod. I, I probably say that's the weakest part of the 4.3 is their guide rod. Because this part right here is very thin compared to the, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, dang it. 
to the 5.1 guide rod. The 5.1 guide rod is a little bit thicker. This one is not at all, especially with if you're going to be running full auto on here because, you know, it, you're going to want a steel guide rod. Uh, inner barrel is the TNT APS-X 603. If you want more FPS, I'd probably say, yeah, switch to a 601. Um, and I also have the bucking that comes with it, but once again, that bucking is just very, uh, it's very tight. And it's not for everybody. Like I, I run it in one of my guns, but it's um, how do I say it? It's just, it's so it's such a tight seal that you can feel it when you rack it. But as soon as you shoot it, it's fine. But it's just it's not for everyone. It annoys some people, and I've had customers in the past not like it. So you know, I just uh, you know, I just, I leave it out, and they can just, just decide if they want to install it or not. It's a really good seal, but yeah. All right, anything else? Um, other than that, man, the Ken's prop has been working out really well. It's incredibly light. Let, let me show you guys how much this. It's not like a light slide, but can you imagine if this was with the stock TM, or even even just your traditional lightweight aluminum? Those are what, 10, 12, 15, 18, 20 in that area. We're under 100. This is 99.5 with uh, blowback unit, front sight, rear sight, not aluminum. Because the aluminum one will drop some weight. Okay, that's three. And then the stock team one is just a little bit more, I think, but not by much. All right, so if you guys have any questions, let me know. This is 600, not including shipping, and um, yeah. I think that's it. So nice job, Ken's prop. It's once again no problem. Uh, and just remember, guys, take your time and install the the parts correct, and don't switch the screws out left and right. And just that screw goes with it, it stays with it. Okay, don't change it, and don't put it on straight, straight as possible. Okay. And I'm gonna work on stippling this, and then I'll go put it on my Facebook and uh, Instagram. Okay. Big shout out to you guys. Thanks. And uh, I think that's it.